A lot of people now who are smart, who are seeing the uh, actual agenda, as in 21, being rolled out there, say, well, well, you know, what can I do? They realize that so much is arrayed against us. But those are the very people we have to hold on to because they are the actual, they are the, those who can discern and think and really be counted on to make good decisions. And to lose those people, I think, is going to be a real, a real issue. We've got to hold on to them, make sure they feel like the war is still winnable and we must not quit. And I know you spend a lot of time wondering about that, like I do. I've been doing this 18 years, and I think all the time, how many people are coming on board? How many people are seeing this and getting it who mm -hmm. are staying in the fight? And how many of them are saying, well, it's time to pull back? So it's mm -hmm. tough. It's tough. Well, you know, that's the thing about this is that there's not going to be anywhere to go. And uh, I, I'm actually going all over the United States now speaking uh, to, you know, groups in all over the country. And... Uh, I think, you know, what I, I ended up writing a book because I realized I just couldn't be everywhere. But I think that it's very important that, uh, that people know that they are not alone, that this is a huge grassroots movement, that it is everywhere, and that people, more and more and more people are waking up every day, and they, they want to be active, and they're getting out there. People, you know, can recognize it also in, um, you know, in, in, uh, in Hitler's Germany. You had, you know, this, this is uh, establishing a network of power where uh, you really have to go through one individual, and they, you know, and then they have their lieutenants who have a tight Well, those are like commiss over. commissars in the old right. uh, Soviet gulag union, sure. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you're powerless against them. They have all of the power, and especially in an Ickley city, which many cities are, uh, who you know, signed on to the International Council of Local Environmental Initiatives, where mm -hmm. basically you are, uh, you're subscribing to the Earth Charter, if you're a member of Ickley, right. and that is a requirement, and people, people don't know that. No, and so, by the way, the controllers are no longer even bothering to tell people what the acronym ICLI means. Uh, oh, they're just I know. using it. Uh, I call it icky, but whatever. <laughs> uh, you're, you're you're in deep trouble. This, well, uh, they're tricking people because they don't want you to know that it's international. So now they call oh, yeah. it ICLI, which stands for nothing, right. and then local government for sustainability. Exactly right. That's it. It's just a buzzword for local government sustainability. That's and you know it what it is? It's made up of a whole bunch of those people who were elected. They're actually your local elected officials on this private mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. And so they have – you can't – you don't even know where they're meeting. You have no idea what goes on in their meetings. And, uh, and basically that's where they plan what they're going to be doing to you. But these are not public meetings. Yeah, and if you ask them, they'll all start uh, spewing this crap about uh, transparency, open – the same thing that <laughs> Obama does, open government, no, no secrets. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually, you know how it is. I mean, it's obviously their their whole uh, jargon and their, you know, their whole rap is exactly the opposite of whatever they say it is. So when they talk about transparency, of course, it's opacity. And when they talk about, um, you know, uh, freedom of choice, they give you no options. And this is the way that they run their jargon. I know. You know, it's it's, it's not it's a lie. And, very treacherous. Uh, I, yeah, it really is. Learn about Agenda Twenty One. This is a stealth program that is coming into your town. It may already be there. And your rights as a citizen, well, we all know they're under attack from the feds, but now your own community can actually be implementing control and unconstitutional actions around the clock, and you wouldn't know it. With Rosa, now the Post Sustainability Institute has a board of directors, and on that board of directors is Nikki Rapana, a friend of ours for many, many years. Really great people working very, very hard for all of us. And going back to her new book, Roses Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21. Now, you were on a neighborhood council, but you were blocked from secret meetings. Now, how, how in the world can that happen? People would say, come on, neighborhood council? Just our friends and neighbors. What, what, what's going on? Secret meetings? Tell us more you about know, that. It's incredible. What's really stunning, you know, and, and I call my book Behind the Green Mouse because really the environmental, the environmental movement has been totally hijacked and is being used as sort of a mask for a totalitarian takeover. And the thing that's really a, sort of a mind lore, really, really was shocking to me, was how far down the food chain they will go. And in fact, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a researcher, I'm a litigation support uh, appraiser, I'm a forensic commercial appraiser, and I testify. So I do a lot of research. And, and when I was elected to a board to oversee a redevelopment project area, I was shocked that the project was fraudulent and that the city was, uh, was aware of that. And in fact, as soon as I alerted people to it, they did everything that they could to get me off of that board. And in fact, it was like going through it was like going through the looking glass or going down Alice's rabbit hole into a nightmare scenario yeah. where they did really everything they could uh, and more to attack me um, publicly, to uh, to 
um, they did things like publish fake ordinances in the newspaper so that we wouldn't be able to get a petition uh, onto the ballot. They sent uh, disinformation people huh. out into the neighborhood telling them that um, I was lying to them and that there was nothing to worry about. They, um, they actually uh, sent people around to tell us that we could remain, we could stay living in the neighborhood, but uh. sort of threatened us that uh -huh. we wouldn't be able to, uh, to take any leadership positions. Who, and who excuse it, me, who were these people? <laughs> What's incredible, Jeff, is that they're just, they, it's invasion of the body snatchers. They look just like us. Oh, they my. They seem just like us. But they're people who, are they toadies? Are they shills? Are they people who are easily flattered and can just be put on a board or a commission? Mm -hmm. Are they kind of slightly unhinged? I have been, you know, there's a little piece of my book. My book's a short book. It's only about 170 pages, but it's got a lot in it. And in there... Um, I tell that story of how we were uh, brought into this group that calls itself the Shadow City Council, and it's made up of people who call themselves the leaders of each neighborhood in this city, and they actually attacked us viciously for as long as they wanted to speak. They attacked us. We said, this is like some kangaroo court. What are you doing? And then the, when we wanted to have you know, a say of our own, the, uh, the chair of this board took off his watch, put it in front of him on the table, and said, you each have one minute to me and my partner. He said, you have one minute to respond. And after we had had our one minute, they, pick, they took us and they uh, put us out and locked the doors. And this was a group that purported to represent the entire city, every my neighborhood God. in the city. Unbelievable! It these was are a these nightmare. are these are Bolshevik commissars. These are yes, these. It's like communist China. It was so like a struggle meeting out of China. It's what it was. And this, uh, your city is a pretty good sized city. Yeah, yeah, it's Santa Rosa, California. One hundred and seventy thousand people, about an yeah. hour north of San Francisco. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But still, these these are allegedly Americans residing in the city in California called Santa Rosa. Just normal yes. folks, but they're it not. Like it. I like the invasion of the body snatchers. Um, Analogy, that's exactly right. Something happens to people. Are they being bought off with uh, ego candies, power? Do they sense power? Do they want, uh, do they want control? What, what is it? Or are they actually indoctrinated and they buy into this crap like some new kind of uh, uh, lunatic religion? It's uh, all of the above. And yeah. I'll tell you that you know this collapsed economy, which of course is engineered, and I sure. know your listeners right. all know that, when you have people who are desperate for whatever money they can get, they are way more vulnerable to manipulation, and they will do whatever it takes. And if it means selling out a neighbor or standing, oh. uh, you know, Sold. if people love Gone. to be in a herd, they're terrified to be cut out of the herd, you know? And when we were kids, the idea of being independent and achieving on your own unique things was, was the way it was, was done. Now... You don't want to be independent because that means you don't have any friends. And if it's you do true, you know, unique things, you're you're weird. You're a danger to the group. Just like you just said, you know about the kids, because this is outcome-based education, which is that you are trained like a dog. You're not supposed to stand out. No one is supposed to be better than anyone else. And uh, everyone's in a cohort. You all come up together, and no one fails. It's completely artificial, and it breeds mediocrity and also a sense that oh, um, yeah. you're part of the herd, you're part of the crowd. And uh, this is how communitarianism works, because right. they shame you, they malign you, they use oh, peer yeah. pressure against you to get you to conform. They actually farm for people who are uh, extremists that they can elevate to positions of power. Right. And, uh, you know, and so they're actually looking for people like that. Well, they and come out of the, the ranks of the, the snitch culture candidates, too. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we've been in the, snow, in the snake pit here, and, uh, and it's domestic spying is part of this. People report on you. Oh, and, yeah. of course, you know, with the uh, Senate Bill uh, 1867, which I know you've probably been covering, you know, uh, yeah. now if, you, you know, if you're uh, stockpiling a little food or you're, you know, or, I mean, your, your government is doing domestic surveillance on you right now. And, uh, now it's and your neighbor that's doing the domestic surveillance your for the government. Yeah. Yes. And, of course, uh, Facebook and all these things train you to expect to have no privacy mm -hmm. and to be ashamed or embarrassed if you're not willing to, um, you know, either report on yourself or, each, or others yeah, or, you know, yeah, uh, be yeah. willing to, you know, to just go along, to get along. It's the good German syndrome. Turn you know? yourself in. <laughs> right. It's total manipulation and control. Well, totalitarianism in progress right now. Yeah, I might as well just pass out guns to people and have them execute themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they get that guilt-ridden about not being part of the team. No, this whole snitch culture thing is, is been, has been co-opted. They're using that, this mentality mm -hmm. of see, who, again, how can Americans have lost their way? Well, the answer is obvious, the media. The media does it. Primarily, mm -hmm. the message is the media. And, and education. Yeah. So what called. Is it? Well, it's not, it's not mm -hmm. education at all. For you parents out there, again, if your children are in, in government schools, 
you're going to lose them. And you're going to lose them in terms of their ability to think and reason rationally because they've been programmed and brainwashed and conditioned and manipulated since they were in preschool. Some of them. Mm -hmm. It's that mm -hmm. bad. And you turn them in. The, the first moment you put your child in front of commercial television is the moment your child uh, is now being programmed and rewired to reject you. And don't make any mistake about it. I'm not joking. You'll be toast by the time they're 12 or 13 or before. Mm -hmm. It's true. They're indoctrinating kids with the neurotic belief that uh, that they're responsible for killing the planet. And so then they're going to be, you know, sort of ready spies to see well, you know, if you're not shutting off your light bulbs or whatever it is or, right. you know, not cooperating with the, uh, with, the, with the whoever it is that's running everything that's going on in your town. And you're seeing that, of course, now. With, look at how people are being diagnosed with mental illnesses. Everybody, kids, you know, adults, people can expect to be drugged for the rest of their lives. You know, this is, this is a, an obedient population. I just, and, uh, just did a story know, the other night about all kinds of new new diseases that the American Psychiatric Institutes <laughs> right. and Matrix have come up with, names that you can't believe. And they're, they're non-existent conditions, but they've got now uh, code numbers for them and certainly a, a protocol and a regimen of prescriptions for them, and these things don't exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your children are being drugged. We're being drugged. And, you know, look at the, the – um, they've got these uh, – there's this thing, I forget what it is, it's called the National, I found this when I was in uh, Dallas giving a speech, the National Bullying Prevention Center. <laughs> this woman said that uh, national, a real change in bullying is going to come with a federal law. So they're going to put six-year-olds in jail for bullying now? That'll you know, stop it, boy. <laughs> the criminalization of the entire population. You know, well, that's it. And it's, it. You're right, and it's underscored with guilt. And the, uh, I don't want to go in that direction. By the way, the House of Representatives, <sighs> representing whom? has yeah. passed the uh, $662 billion defense bill that contains that provision, folks, yep. 1031 or 1032, regarding the handling of certain terror suspects. Now, remember, Obama said he's going to veto the bill, and now apparently he's not. Well, we knew he oh, wasn't going to. Oh, is that right? It was a lie. It was just a, oh, a trick. It was a lie. Now, course. the only thing that, that remains to be seen is how confused the current version that passed is. It was in committee, mm -hmm. and there are some who are suggesting that Obama was going to veto it because if the military apprehends someone in this country, American citizen or not, that person is a what? That person is essentially a POW in the hands of the military. And oh, technically, the Geneva Conventions would apply. Yeah, they don't want the Geneva Convention to apply. That's it. Okay, so, your, new, uh, your new book is out, Rosa. Let's talk about yeah. that a little bit. Great, Great title. Love the title. Behind the Green Mask. UN Agenda 21, the green mask. Who's against green out there, right? Mm -hmm. you got to be green. you got climate change and all that. And unfortunately, they have the one thing they do have, in addition to media control and domination, is time. They have time on their sides. As long as they can maintain the grip on the sheep, all they have to do is wait 10 years for another generation to come up because that generation is guaranteed to generally be less intelligent than its, than its predecessors. That's mm -hmm. how they work. Our young people now... And for all of you parents out there, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Our young people now have never been dumber or less. Oh, they can play video games wonderfully. They can text on cell phones wonderfully, but they can't spell and they don't read. They, That's I bet right. They're 40, being indoctrinated. Forty percent of the children in the U.K. don't even have a book. They don't own one book. True story. <laughs> anyway, we are literally in the hands of now a dictatorship. Uh, we've lost our Constitution. Uh, it's, it's been shredded. Uh, you remember what Bush said about it. And so forth. This is, these are very, very bad times, and you, you folks cannot withdraw. You need to move forward. Uh, the imposters in Washington are not just in, in the Oval Office; they are in the House of Representatives and the Senate. These people all need to go in the next election. All of them. All of them. Okay. Now you've got some solutions in your book behind the green mask. You end Agenda 21. Tell us about some of the ideas you've come up with that can be used to thwart these. And I call these people true terrorists because they are un-American, anti-American, and they're out to destroy this country. You said it. And, you know, here we are. We're talking about the, the most serious thing that, that could be discussed, which is the destruction and complete collapse of our country and our freedom. But one, and one thing that United Nations Agenda 21 has going for it is that it is a global plan, but it is implemented locally. But you know what? That is also what it has against it, because we are local, all of us. And so this is the first thing that you need to know, is that this is a huge grassroots group of people who are all independent and all fighting together to stop United Nations Agenda 21. So I do have about 20 pages in the back of my book. Um, and uh, the first thing, you know, and, there, and there, I've got some very good 
uh, information on how to anti-Delphi a meeting. These are government meetings that you go to, visioning meetings, where you're manipulated into a predetermined outcome. Visioning meetings, is that what they're calling them? Visioning <laughs> That's meetings? That's what they call them, visioning meetings, right? Oh. You know, where you're supposed to uh, fantasize what you want to see in your town. Um, I got it. And, you know, it's existing. All, you know, these are, these are things where you're supposed to envision what's supposed to happen on somebody else's property, you know, and your government's just going to take it away by eminent domain and impose whatever it is, mainly smart growth on there. But I tell you how you can take over those meetings. It's very effective. One thing you need to know is that um, you think that United Nations Agenda 21 isn't happening in your town because you haven't seen it called that, but it has many, many names. And I help you identify what it is and then show you when you're looking through your newspaper what to look for so that you know which meetings to go to and what to do when you get there. And um, there are so many things that you can do. You can uh, start, you know, of course, you get together with other people. You run for office yourself. Okay, and I don't care if you don't have any money. You are going to get the conversation out there. I suggest that you vote for people that you don't know, that you've never met, <laughs> that uh, that don't have any money. Those are the people you want to get into office. Anyone who's talking about Agenda 21, who's uh, bringing up these issues, you want to try and get them into office, help support them. Yeah, anybody who talks to... about sustainability or green, you don't want in You office. don't want them. No. You want to get young people involved in this conversation because this is a youth movement primarily, and these are people who have been indoctrinated. But oh, they have easiest target you know, crowd to, to yeah to brainwash. They're weak, so you want to help them. You know, I was thinking about what you were saying, Jeff. You know, you're talking about TV and stuff, and I was thinking about when I was a kid. You know, we watched uh, you know Leave It to Beaver and uh, you know and um, uh, well you know Sheriff Andy Taylor. What was the show? You Andy know? Griffith. Andy Griffith. And I thought you know these are Mayberry. Course, were pe- they, Mandy of Mayberry, and they were, um, you know, they were morality plays. And now the morality plays, of course, are completely amoral. And I'm not, you know, uh, I mean, I'm a liberal Democrat myself, but, you know, the thing is, is that people have lost their way. So you want to help young people get back to a sense of knowing what is right and wrong. Because part of their education says that there is no such thing as anything being wrong. It's only a different way of looking at it. And this is completely... Isn't that the truth? There's nothing, yeah. no such thing as wrong anymore. It's all, it's all shades of, of uh, different hues of morality, such as it is. It's a fluid morality. There are no mm-hmm. hard and fast rules anymore. There's no accountability it's, either. That's, there's no accountability. That's right. And, you know, this is something... Okay, so one other thing. Uh, many, many things in my book, but we started a group. Um, and we have, I have three websites. One of them uh, you mentioned, postsustainabilityinstitute.org. But then, of course, there's Democrats against UN Agenda 21.com. That's the one that has all the blogs and a lot of information. But the one that is a local boots on the ground group is Santa Rosa Neighborhood Coalition.com. And that is a local group that you can do something like that yourself, where you actually, it's hand to hand combat out there. And that that website shows you what we've done to stop a lot of these programs and plans in our own town. And believe me, you can do it with just a few people, but you've got to have courage to right. stand right. up. Please give us those two URLs again, Democrats Against Agenda 21. It's actually Democrats Against UN, UN. Agenda 21.com. Got it. And the other one, if you go to that one, you can get to all of them. And then the other one uh, is Santa Rosa Neighborhood Coalition. Dot com. And, of course, postsustainabilityinstitute.org. Very good. And, okay. of course, you can get my book there. And I kind of say that book is a gift because uh, it costs me about what, uh, what I'm selling it for, which is 15 bucks. And the reason I want it out there is because it's got great information and it's very readable. So uh, people uh, are really picking this book up, and I'm very glad because we want to stop United Nations Agenda 21. We're going to keep our country free. How, we have uh, three minutes left. How do you address the issue of treasonous representation by your, well, city council and mm-hmm. certainly the state? You've got state assemblymen, uh, state senators. They're, they're uh, wow, they're, they're, they're tough. I see what yeah. comes out of, of uh, Sacramento, and I, I, I can't believe it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what I did personally? I reported uh, my assemblyman to, uh, he was uh, guilty of uh, conflict of interest. I reported him uh, to the uh, Fair Political Practices Commission, and he was fined. And one thing that we do, we've put out flyers. We've put out 7,000 flyers to let people in this area know. Um, one thing you can do is to get as much visibility for this information as possible. Get on websites, blog, uh, use posting sites for newspapers. Get the information out. The worst thing you can do, as far as these people are concerned, is shine a light on them. And oh, they, once oh, you create it. visibility, just, yeah. you really take them down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
All right. Anything we've missed here? We've got just a minute and a half left that we want to make sure that people understand. This is something that is happening right now. Uh, close to 700 American cities have now been taken over by Agenda 21 programs. They come in many different packages, many different colors. It's, it's quite a stealth, a stealth move, uh, and they do recruit successfully fanatics in your community to work against you. And I just, I guess it's a, what they're trying to do is divide and conquer us. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're turning us against each other, but I really want to encourage people not to be good Germans, to have guts, stand up, and speak out when you know it's wrong. And it's everywhere. So don't think that if your town isn't a member of ICLEI, you're, you're, uh, you're not part of it, because United Nations Agenda 21 is everywhere right now. So let's all get together and stop it. We can do it. We 